So at first, a quick check. After the upgrade, a lot of objects are invalid. Some may have been compiled already partially due to dependencies, but normally objects need recompilation. So here we see a number of objects. The PDB dollar seed has been recompiled already, but we need to compile them. By default, this happens after the upgrade. So when you run standard auto upgrade or whatever tool you're using, then a recompilation happens after the upgrade. It happens with util RP, RP for recompile. And util RP does nothing else than reading the CPU count from your system, subtracting one, and then giving this to util PRP, parallel recompile. It recompiles all objects, PDB after PDB. And all objects means also your objects. I come back to this in a second. Now you could have the idea of calling UTL PRP by yourself and you will find an example on the block. There may be situations in the past, we had something with virtual CPUs on sandboxes where you got so many recompiled jobs, um, it blow up your system. So this shouldn't happen. And in such cases, it may be a good idea to recompile by yourself with your chosen parallel degree. Or even if the recompilation would take too much resources from your environment in a shared environment. But here I do the opposite. I run UTL PRP with a parameter 32. So I tell it, hey, I have 32 CPU cores potentially available. And please do the recompilation. It will build up now 30 run parallel jobs and one controller. By default, auto upgrade compiles. So this is the standard and it compiles everything invalid. But if you decide you would like to do this by yourself, you run utlrp no in your auto upgrade config file, you set that, and then you may pass on a script also. You don't have to, but it's easier if you do this in one shell. So an after action script and this compile my way sh then calls, for instance, SQL scripts doing the recompilation your way. You can't postpone PDB dollar seeds recompilation because that is already engraved here. And this happens at the end of the upgrade, even though you skip the recompilation. And as I said before, partially CDP dollar root compiles as well due to some dependencies. So which options do you have now? So let's say you postpone it, then it could be your own scripts. So you decide, okay, I split it up in 50 parallel scripts and I have my own scheduler or whatever you are doing. Uh, you can also use the Oracle scheduler, of course, for your own scripts, that's also possible. And you decide which parallel degree you'd like to use. Option number two, and this is something we recommend only right now when you have a lot of invalid user objects. Due to the fact that the recompilation does not differ between Oracle maintained objects and user objects, I have seen it in customer environments, especially in development databases, that there are hanging around a ton of invalid user objects. And UTLRP will still try to compile them. And of course, in many cases, it will simply fail because some maybe tables or whatever aren't there, but the PL SQL is still hanging around in a test schema. If you want to skip that, there's a currently undocumented flag available. So in UTL PRP, you find a UTL recomp call and it says para, uh, recomp parallel with threads. If you add here this in a red box flex, UTL recomp Oracle maintained, then the recompilation will only attempt Oracle maintained objects with the Oracle maintained flag on yes. So the Oracle objects in a dictionary. This is currently not standard. We are thinking of putting this into the upgrade. So there may be a backport soon. Right now, this is why the slide is titled unofficial. This is something you can do by yourself, but keep in mind it's not supported to adjust or change the Oracle maintained scripts in RDB Admin. but this could be a workaround to uh, do some magic on the recompilation when you know you have too many invalid objects in your user environments. So only attempt 
tuning the recompilation when you have really a ton of invalid objects. It doesn't make sense for the standard set like I had in my example before. You don't gain much. And especially when you have a lot of user objects and your user schemas invalid, then it may make sense. So when recompilation takes unusually long, then attempt that otherwise. And what is unusually long? Let's say your upgrade takes 30 minutes and the recompilation takes 45 minutes. Then we may look into that. Otherwise, we don't.